After the November election, the Democrats in our state look to be in very good shape for 2010, but much has happened since then. First, the race for governor. The state's most popular Democrat, Attorney General Richard Blumenthal, decided not to run. And then a new poll came out showing Governor Rell with a 75% approval rating, and that poll was not as kind to the state's senior senator, Democrat Chris Dodd, whose popularity has plunged. The poll showed if the election were held today, Senator Dodd would lose. With us today to talk about this is the chairwoman of the Connecticut Democratic Party, Nancy DiNardo, and all things Democratic we'll talk about today, as well as Republicans. Chairwoman DiNardo, nice to see you back nice here. Nice seeing you, Dennis. First of all, you were scribbling all sorts of things during Mayor Giuliani's interview. What did you have yes. to say? <laughs> well, I thought that, you know, some of the things that he said were wrong. I mean, he talked about, you know, that there hasn't been change, but in fact, there clearly has been change. He talked the earmark saying that the earmarks were probably more than there was in the past, and that's not true. There is, in fact, less earmarks in this budget than there had been, and more than half of them are Republican earmarks. So um, I understand, and, you know, he was giving the party line, but uh, he just wasn't accurate in his facts about that. The, uh, the mayor believes that, that Republicans can take Senator Dodd's seat this year. You've never been afraid to, to, you know, to you know, tell the senators in our state, you know, how you feel. You were you know, very upfront with Senator Lieberman. I know a lot of Democrats are really disappointed as to how Senator Dodd has handled this mortgage controversy. How disappointed are you? Well, I listened to what he had to say, and he basically said, and, and I believe him in what he said, he basically had said that he was waiting for the Ethics Committee report. And that would have made sense. You know, the Ethics Committee report comes out, and then he talks about what he had done at that time. And they just haven't come out. And so he apologized for waiting so long, and he's released his records. He has shown that there is no evidence of any wrongdoing, and he has apologized. And I think it's time to move on. You know, members of the media, including WFSB, would like to see the senator release all the documents. We would bring in an independent mortgage person to look at them, be able to copy them, determine what's missing, if anything, and go from there. Would you support that? No, I, I think what he had done in allowing people to come and look at them and answer any questions that anybody had was a that's a enough? common yeah, that's a common So you practice. think it's a dead issue? Yes, I do. I think the Republicans are trying to hold on to it so that they can have an issue. You know, and I don't think it's an issue at all. But there are a lot of independents and some Democrats who do right. want to know the truth. I mean, they're losing, you know, their 401s have been shriveling up. They want to see Senator Dodd at least say, you know, here they are, take them, put them, they'll be on my website, you can analyze them, bring in an expert, I don't care. Well, he had an independent uh, person look at them, and they clearly showed that he um, Well, it's, it's not independent in the sense that, it, you know, you know, the media didn't hire him and a citizens group didn't hire him. Right. But I think, as I said, there's no evidence of any wrongdoing. He has shown them and he has answered it. And um, I do think that it's an, a dead issue. The poll showed that 42% um, of the voters do not trust him. More don't trust him than do. Does that hurt the party statewide? No, I don't think so. I think people, what we see is that people were reacting to the economy and were angry with it. Washington for not being more careful in regulating, you know, particularly banks. And when people see that, they have no outlet and they certainly blame the people in D.C. So um, I think that's what we saw with Dodd's numbers. As the chairwoman, you could easily put together a news conference this coming week with, uh, you know, Congressman, um, you know, Congressman uh, uh, Larson and um, uh, Murphy, the whole delegation, mm -hmm. standing behind Senator Chris Dodd saying we support him, the mortgage issue, issue is dead. Can you do that? Sure. Yes. And will they do it? Oh, I think they would absolutely. I have no, I have no doubts that they would do it. You know, a lot of Democrats say that you know maybe another Democrat would be a better candidate to uh, to go against the Republicans next year because the Republicans are going to sink a lot of money into this race next oh, year. Oh, obviously. I mean, the RNC has already been doing that um, themselves and trying to get interest in this. But um, I stand behind Chris Dodd. He has been a great senator for the state for years, and he continues. Just in this past month, he has been traveling around the state, meeting with people, holding forums to hear people issues and been fighting for Democrats in DC you know he's a key executive uh, executive executor uh, executioner of uh, the Obama agenda and he's important and playing being involved in all the important parts of the agenda and has been actively involved in education health care reform hearings on how to improve uh, consumer protection. I and mean, he's in D.C. working hard and in Connecticut. From a practical standpoint, let's say another poll comes out showing his approval rating even lower. How low does it have to get before you would sit down and say, you know what, you're hurting the party, why don't you step aside? Do you ever see that happening? If, no. I how don't. low would First it have to get? 
I don't see it uh, going lower, and Chris Dodd is a far better politician than I am. And I, I mean, to speculate on anything like that, I think, you know, is not going to go anywhere. I think uh, Mayor Giuliani even said, you know, it's a long way away. And I think He's Senator a formidable Dodd, candidate. Yeah. Yes. And it's um, Senator Dodd. Uh, knows what he is doing and he's working hard for the people and as the time for election comes closer and he's out there campaigning I, I'm going to see I predict that we're going to see his numbers go up. So to wrap up this particular segment you know this particular topic uh, you would like to see the media basically drop the issue you think it's a dead issue. That's yes, the official Democratic Party yes. stamp. All right let's move on to the governor's race in 2010 Governor El New poll came out shows she's extremely popular. How do you go about beating her next year? Well I think she's doing that to herself Dennis. I think you know when she came out during before the budget and she talked about being scared. I mean, people don't want a leader who is going to be scared. They want somebody who can say, yes, these are difficult times, but I have a plan. And clearly, she doesn't have a plan. You know, the month before and then even two days before her state of the state, she talked about an $8 billion deficit. And then she only talks about, at the state of the state, uh, meeting up to $6 billion. So she was leaving a $2 billion gap and I believe that's because she didn't want to talk about revenues. You know, it's nice to be popular saying, I'm not going to raise taxes. But with a $2 billion uh, deficit that she didn't talk about, what is she going to do? But she doesn't want to own up to dealing with revenue. She wants the Democrats to take the responsibility for that. Are you satisfied with the Democratic field so far? Uh, Susan Bysowitz, Dan Malloy, and Jim Yes, as, as I've always said, we have a very deep bench. And um, every one of those candidates is very capable of stepping up with a plan and moving Connecticut forward, unlike our governor now. Would you encourage Ned Lamont to get in the race? He's thinking about it, we're told. I encourage any Democrat uh, to get involved. That's part of the process. I think that's what's so important. We saw that just last year in the presidential primaries, that more people got involved uh, and it was better for the Democratic Party. Have you had any conversations with Mr. Lamont about no, running for I governor? Seen or? Ned, uh, about a month or so. Let's okay. look ahead to 2012. Another poll came out showed that uh, Richard Blumenthal would beat uh, Joe Lieberman in a Senate matchup in 2012. Uh, is it your belief that uh, Mr. Blumenthal will challenge the senator in 2012? No. I mean, at this point, all that uh, the attorney general has been saying is that he's focusing on his election for attorney general in 2010. And he loves being attorney general. And I think that he will you know, work hard, as he always has. So it, it would be hard to predict at this point. The poll showed he's the most popular Democrat in the state. Are you disappointed he's not running for governor? Well, as I said, we have great candidates, but it would have been nice to have somebody with that type of, of popularity to make it easier uh, for the Democrats. But he loves his job, and it would be difficult uh, for him to make that kind of decision. So. He, and he puts a lot of hours into it. Yes, he does. Democratic Party Chairman Nancy Dinaro, I'm starting to lose my voice here a little cold. I think we're both battling it. All right, yes. Nancy Dinaro, thank you so much for being with us. When we come